James 1, 17 says, and it's up on the screen so you, you can all follow, every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now here's, uh, I want to explain that a little bit because I, I, I did some explaining on Sunday and it, it never fails. Someone is going to bring up to me, well, how about Job? What about Job? What about Paul's thorn in the flesh? Well, if you read your Bible, you'll find out that Job, his troubles were from who? They weren't from God. All of his troubles were from Satan. And I, I could go, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time one of these Wednesdays talking about all the religious traditions that people have been taught over the years. What about Job? What about Paul's thorn in the flesh? Well, if you read your Bible... <laughs> Let me clue you on this subject. The thorn of the flesh is from who? It was from a witch, but it really came from the devil who inspired a witch that was going around following the Apostle Paul, harassing him. <laughs> the thorn in the flesh was a messenger from Satan. You see, here, here's what we have here. All, every good and every perfect gift is from above. Sickness is not from above. God does not have sickness in heaven. So where is he going to get it? He doesn't have sickness. He's not giving sickness to anyone. He's not giving trouble with, to people. So, who's the troublemaker? The it's, it's Satan, the devil. He's the one who inspires people to do crazy, stupid things. I mean, think about it. These, these men that have done uh, terrible murders, why did that happen? Because Satan inspired or Satan possessed someone to do some ridiculous things. Why are there wars and people killing people? It's the devil. God is trying to inspire us, and the devil is also trying to inspire us or motivate us to do God for motivating us for good things, and the devil is trying to motivate us to do bad. So, the thorn in the flesh. See, the thing about it, when you read something in the scripture, here's the rule that we all can remember. If you're going to try to interpret a certain scripture, you need other scriptures to help you interpret what that, script, that scripture means. Because it isn't from our natural brain that we figure out what the scripture says. Now let's, let's talk about the Apostle Paul for just a minute. The, the Apostle Paul said that he had a thorn in the flesh. Where did he get that terminology he got it from his studies of the Old Testament. He was a Pharisee. That means he was a studier of the law, the, co the commandments, and all the things that were written in the Old Covenant. Paul knew them all, better than anybody. He must have got that 
terminology, thorn, of a th thorn in the flesh, from somewhere. And he did. He got it from the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the Jewish people were told that they should not allow, when, when they came into a territory, they were supposed to get rid of all of the people that were worshiping the devil. Let's put it that way. All those people that were wicked. And they get not, don't get them, let them be in your camp because they will become a thorn in your side. How many ever had some people that were a pain in the neck? I know what some of you are trying to say. I'm not saying that. Porn, a, a, a thorn in, or a pain in my... <laughs> yeah, good one. A pain in the neck. That's what the Apostle Paul was saying. He had a thorn in the flesh, and it was people. People can become a thorn in the flesh. I'm going to expound on that at another time. But what we want to talk about this morning is something really good, and that is about the goodness of God. And when we obey what the Lord is teaching us by His Word, then we can have a healthy life. And I'm not, I'm not really talking about 1 Peter 2.24 that says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. If I were healed, then I am healed. And let me just say something really cool about that scripture. It's telling us that Jesus, on the, the uh, whipping post, he was beaten. He was given stripes on his back, on his whole body, really. He was given stripes of punishment. And his, by his stripes, we were healed. Well, you know, a lot of people have trouble believing that or receiving that. Let me uh, compare it to something that we all talk about and we all, we all want to be saved. We all want to have salvation. We all want to be born again and go to heaven. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. And if that's true... When did it happen? It happened 2,000, more than 2,000 years ago. That he took our sins so that we could be saved and go to heaven. The, at the same time that he took all of our sins upon himself, he took our punishment upon himself, for sin, because sin has punishment. The wages of sin is death. Jesus took all of the punishment that was meant for people who were sinners. But when we confess, when we confess Jesus is my Savior, and I, I confess that I believe God raised him from the dead, then I will be saved. That happened for me 2,000 years ago. The same thing happened for our healing 2,000 years ago. What kind of healing? Healing that's physical, mental, emotional, addictions. All those were healed 2,000 years ago. Now, if some, somebody comes into the church tonight... And they said, I want to be saved. I want to know I'm going to heaven. 
And we would say, well, then all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Savior, that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you will be saved. And somebody might say, well, I don't feel any different. Well, you don't have to feel any different because Jesus is the one who did the work for you. All you have to do is say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. It's so easy. But some people, now the same thing goes for any kind of healing. You say it with your mouth, you believe it in your heart, receiving what Jesus already did at the cross and at the whipping post. He already did the work 2,000 years ago. So talking about salvation, see, uh, I'm comparing it to healing because in the scriptures, the whole work that Jesus did, and that's when he said, it is finished. That's why we call it the finished work of Jesus. The finished work of Jesus gave us both salvation and healing. At the same time. That's why 1 Peter 2.24 says, you were healed. It's hard. People have a hard time believing that because it's physical, it's, it's uh, painful, these kind of things. And it really didn't amount to the same thing that salvation does because salvation, you have to believe and trust the word of God that says you're going to heaven. Right? When you confess Jesus, you trust God is going to make that happen. It's the same thing with healing. We trust God that's going to make it happen. And then what we do is we pray like the Lord's, the, the Lord's prayer or the disciples' prayer says that your will, this is, You'll recognize this prayer that Jesus told the disciples to pray. He, they, they should pray, Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. Or you can say it another way. You could say, My healing is already my, mine because I'm praying that the, the will of God is going to come to my body in manifestation be, as it already is in the spiritual realm, the unseen realm, just like salvation. You can't see heaven. You can't see your salvation. It's in the spiritual realm. And so is healing. You're receiving healing and you're saying to the Lord, I pray and I receive your will to be done, your healing to be done in my body as it already is in heaven. By the stripes of Jesus, which is an accomplished fact in heavenly places. You're praying that the manifestation of my healing would happen in my body like it already is in heavenly places, in the unseen realm. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Walking into healthy life, a healthy life. This is so good. Let's just go through real quick. Galatians chapter 5 
In two places it says this, I say then, and the Apostle Paul is talking, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Where do we get the lust of the flesh? Inspired from the devil. He's always tempting us to sin, to go into addictions, <laughs> What You know what I'm talking about. But if you live and walk in the Spirit, then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And in the other scripture, Galatians 5.25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit and also walk in the Spirit. What does walking in the Spirit mean? Walking in the Scriptures is talking about living in the Spirit. And so this Scripture right here tells us to live in the Spirit is also to walk in the Spirit. And then we should also walk in the truth. 2 John 1, 4. I rejoiced greatly that I have found some of your children walking in truth or living in truth. How do you live in the truth of God? You stay in the scriptures. You memorize James 1.17 <laughs> or another scripture that is on your heart. You read the scriptures. That's abiding in the scriptures. That's abiding in the word of God. That's abiding or living in the promises of God. Are you with me? Walking in the truth. Living in the truth of God. You're not going to find truth on television. You're not going to find truth on the news broadcast. They're always... It's... it's uh, it's phony truth. <laughs> it's, uh, what do we call it? Somebody help me with that. Fake news. Fake news. It's lies. Where does lies come from? The inspiration of the devil. Darkness. Oh, good. All right. I'm having a good time. I don't know about you, but this is good. I love it. 3 John 1, 4 talks about this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And if you know, if you read anything about the Apostle John, he was always talking about believers and referring to them as his children. Other believers. Because John lived to a great old life they tried to kill him on the isle of patmos but he lived even through that and he lived way beyond 90 and we know that and then the next thing is walking by faith we walk by faith and not by sight and that's a good scripture to know about Salvation and healing. Both of those things. We, we always live according to what the faith of God is giving us. We're, the, the faith of God comes to us and is magnified by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we get our faith and our, our batteries charged up in faith by walking in the Word of God. We walk by faith, and so when, when you have doubts, then, and this always happens. It happened to me for a very long time when I was first born again, and I received Jesus as my Savior, I was always having these doubts. These doubts would come to me. Well, you, 
you really aren't that good anymore. You know, you're a little bit better than you used to be, but you're still not that good. You're not going to heaven. And you get those doubts. Who's it from? From the devil. The devil, the even, evil one, is always trying to give you doubt and unbelief. The same thing that you get when you watch TV. Doubt and unbelief. <laughs> Unless you're tuning in to somebody who's teaching the word of God. And be careful about that too. Because of them, sometimes you'll go and you'll tune in to somebody that you think he's, he's a real... Uh, Matter of fact, I'm thinking of somebody right now. I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you their name. But he's a real cool preacher on TV. He's cool, man. He, he wears cool clothes. He's got holes in his jeans. He's cool. He wears a T-shirt to church. And he teaches about the Paul's thorn in the flesh the wrong way. He teaches about Job the wrong way, not according to the scriptures. So I'm telling you, be careful of who you listen to. Because some, some preachers are teaching you doubt and unbelief, not faith. How would you like, to, if you were going to go to God and you've got a, a problem, you've got an emergency, and you want to call out the name of Jesus and Father, I need help in this situation and I'm calling out on the name of Jesus and then all of a sudden, the devil plants a thought in your, in your thinking, yeah, but what about Job? He went through all those trouble. Maybe, maybe you're just like Job. No, I am not. I'm a follower of Jesus. I don't follow Job. <laughs> he was a good man. Well, listen to me. The very first part of Job, you know what it says? That he was a righteous man. Listen, I know a lot of righteous people that go to church every day. I mean, every, every Sunday, every Wednesday. They're religiously about it. They are always in church. They wouldn't, they resist sin all the time, never fail. But they don't know the word of God. They don't know wor the word of faith. They're righteous. They're holy people. They go to church all the time, but they do not know what the word of faith really says. Believe it in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's all that is. That's what the word of faith is. Believing with your heart and saying, praying with your mouth. It's so simple. So, you get those thoughts. <laughs> Don't watch somebody who's going to teach you religious traditions that are not according to, the, uh, according to the Word of God. Somebody say amen to that or say oh me, either one. So we're walking by faith. We're walking in the truth. We're walking in the Spirit. We're getting the word of God on to our self just like the armor of God. Amen? And we'll quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. And then we walk in the light. 1 John 1.7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, or what, what, is, what is it talking about? If we walk in the light, if we live in the light as Jesus is in the light, we will have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So when you're, when you're doing a lot of these things, and let me say this one more time about healing. You're walking in the spirit, 
You're walking in the truth. You're walking by faith. You're doing all of these things. These things, the way you live, is not going to give you healing. What? <laughs> your works and your walk and your living did not go to the cross, did not go to the whipping post. The only way, the only reason you can claim healing is by the stripes of Jesus. Period. No other way. And I want you to be good. I, I want to be good. I want to be, I want to live a holy life and a righteous life before the, the God. But the only thing that's going to give you healing, deliverance from addictions, is the stripes of Jesus. Come on, somebody say amen to that. That's good preaching, if I, if I say so myself. Praise the Lord. Walking in love is another thing. We got to do it. Walking in love. Romans 13, 13 says, Let us walk properly as in the day, not in reverly now, or in, junk, in drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, not in strife and envy. So why did I read that scripture? <laughs> I don't think anybody here is, is revelly, reveling in drunkenness or lewdness or lust. But somebody might be in strife. It's amazing to me when I look at that scripture that God himself put this in the scriptures and he put strife right alongside of drunkenness he put them right together strife and drunkenness strife and lust amen ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says walk in love as christ also has loved us and Jesus gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. In other words, we're walking in love just because love loved us, or Christ loved us. I said that right. Love lo loved us. God is love. Amen. I, some of you are on the ball here. Okay. Okay. Walking like Jesus. We might as well go into the, all the rest of it. Ephesians 5, 1 says, be imitators of God. We should be imitators of Jesus. You're, not, you're never going to be Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that. I will never be Jesus, but I, I can imitate him. I want to be just like him when I grow up. And I'm still growing. I'm still growing up. I don't know everything. I, knew, I know some things, but I'm not. I, I'll tell you this. Let me give you a little hint. Nobody knows everything. I don't care your favorite preacher on TV or, or somewhere else in the world. Nobody knows everything. God himself knows everything. Jesus, because he's at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, Jesus knows everything. But people do not. When we get to heaven, we're going to know just like Jesus knows. But we're not in heaven yet. We're in heaven by our pos position. <laughs> we're in heaven, in heavenly places, when we walk in the Spirit. If you're walking in the Spirit every day, all day, praise the Lord. You're in heavenly places. You're in the place that you are walking as a spirit man, not a natural man. A natural man, I, li I like it the way we say our forecast confession of God's Word. We say, I am a spirit being. 
not natural. A lot of people are living their lives just like natural people. No wonder they never see the supernatural power of God. Because they, they're living their life, or they're walking in their life, just like their neighbor, who's unsaved, not born again. Christians are watching the same thing as their neighbors do on television. No wonder you're not in the spirit and seeing supernatural healings and miracles. No wonder. Because God honors his word. He watches over his word to make sure that it comes to pass. So you have to have the word of God in your heart and God's going to watch over and make sure that comes to pass. Somebody say amen. amen. Colossians 1.10 says, You may walk worthy of the Lord. Oh, that's a good one. Walking worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, be, being fruitful in every good work and, every, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And that's powerful. That's good. That's amazing. I, I really pray that you all do just like I pray for myself that I would, the, my heart would be enlightened that we can walk just like this, worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. But let me remind you one more time that does not give you healing. When you stand your ground to receive healing and deliverance and being set free from some kind of addiction, uh, some kind of an emotional uh, crisis, you're standing for healing. It's by the stripes of Jesus. Only. Just like... When you have salvation, it's only Jesus. That's it. The only reason you're saved is because you're claiming Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I claim also Jesus is my healer. That's it, period. Nothing else added. You can't add anything to get to heaven. You can't, get, you can't add anything by being good or even reading your Bible all the time. You can't receive healing. You have to believe it in your heart and say it with your mouth and receive it from God because of what Jesus did by taking stripes on His back. Amen.